Hare Krishna. So, <clears throat> okay. And today is a <clears throat> festival day. Actually, Srila Prabhupada, he said every day is a festival day in Krishna consciousness. But some are designated as such, and others we just know. <laughs> Today is uh, Hanuman Jayanti, the appearance of Hanuman. It's also Balaram Rasayatra, Lord Balaram's return to Vrindavan. It's also the appearance of Shamananda Pandit, one of the great devotees who propagated pure religious principles after the departure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's also appearance of Vamsi Vadana Nanda, who was really an incarnation of Lord Krishna's flute. <laughs> How can a flute incarnate into a person? Because actually in the spiritual world, everything is sentient. Everything has consciousness. So this flute in Lord Chaitanya's Leela had no place, so he came as a person. And he also manifested himself as the Murdanga. So the flute, the, the Murdanga is also an incarnation of the flute. <clears throat> That's mentioned by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in uh, Navadvip Mahatmya, where he speaks about how Krishna, before coming as Lord Chaitanya, was telling the flute, I don't really have your use for your service in this incarnation. And the flute was very, very sad. <laughs> But then he decided how to come, and he incarnated as a Murdanga, one aspect of his appearance, and the other one was a personality named Vamsi Vadanananda, who is today's appearance day. <clears throat> but we'll speak about um, Hanuman, because I was requested by Ananda Prabhu to speak about this, some of the particular essential points of Hanuman's jumping across the ocean and what are the uh, what we can learn from that in our practice of devotional service uh, what we are faced with either big or small in the same way that the same thing that Hanuman was faced with in his devotional service we are also Faced with challenges, obstacles, uh, lethargy, lethargy, and also lack of confidence. All these things are obstacles. <laughs> so we can uh, learn from this particular pastime of Hanuman how he dealt with these obstacles. <laughs> okay. So. And then at the end of the class, I just have a one announcement, so please remind me. If I forget, it's an important announcement. Nijaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai
So, uh, to illustrate the more essential points that Hanuman was teaching us, there is one particular pack time that condenses a lot of the main points that we could learn from his pastimes. And that is that when he jumped across the ocean and left um, the shore of India to reach Lanka, knowing that Sita was there and trying to find Sita, we find that uh, there was four main obstacles that he, he uh, had to deal with. One was the jump, which was 800 miles across the ocean. Wasn't easy. Two, the golden mountain that appeared. Three, 
the uh, the serpent lady, her name was Surasa, sent by the demigods to test him. And Simika, the mother of Rahu, who was sent by the demons to destroy him. <laughs> so these were the obstacles that he had to face, not small obstacles. But Krishna gives us obstacles according to the level of our ability to uh, fight. In other words, Prabhupada used to say, Krishna will not put you in the situation where you cannot become successful. You may seem like you find yourself in situations where the situation becomes overwhelming or difficult or maybe even impossible. But that's just from our perspective. Krishna never does that to the devotee. But it appears we get into situations like that. It's just our appearance or our lack of complete understanding. But Krishna will allow Maya to attack you. And in allowing that, you can uh, somehow exhibit these qualities that are needed to overcome these obstacles. And by exhibiting these qualities, you, be, you move forward in your process of devotional service. So Hanuman had many obstacles. <clears throat> and the Ramayana is full of obstacles given by friends, family members, well-wishers, and even demons. <laughs> We find that's the, if you study the Marayan, you'll see one after another, there are so many obstacles. But the Ramayan is a lesson on life, how to live life. Life is about accepting the challenges that you have to accept in order to achieve your goal. Everyone has to have a goal in life. There are people who say, well, there's no real goal in life. You can just choose whatever goal you want, and that's your goal. Or as the as the uh, fatalists would say, eat, sleep, drink, be merry, and enjoy, that's life. But there's no goal in there, that's just hedonism. It doesn't lead to any satisfaction or any happiness at all. Mm -hmm. Is it warm? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so everyone has to have a goal in life. And so in 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 making goals, we have two things. We have short-term goals, and we have the long-term goal. The long-term goal was pretty much common for all of us. And that is to get to the point where we awaken our, our spontaneous love for Krishna. That's, what, that's the real goal, is to come to the stage of bhava, come to the stage of experiencing that, the loving happiness of Krishna in devotional service. And that's, that is the goal of this Krishna consciousness movement. But in pursuing a long-term goal, there are many short-term goals that are needed on the way to bring us to the long-term goal of success. And these short-term goals always are fraught with obstacles. Even the long-term goal is. But we'll find, studying the life of Hanuman, we'll see. And I'll mention... Mm, there are material things that Hanuman had to deal with, and then there's the spiritual qualities that he needed to ex exhibit in order to overcome the material blocks. Mm -hmm. They're standing on the ocean of, of the shore of uh, India, thinking how to cross the ocean. All the monkeys are there, the group headed by Hanuman, and Jambavan was also there. The other groups of monkeys went to different directions, all cha changing or all looking for Sita somewhere. But somehow Hanuman got the signal from Sampati, and Sampati indicated, yes, Sita is in Lanka. So now they know that. Now they have to get across this ocean, 800 miles. 80 yojanas, uh, no, not 80 yojanas, 100 yojanas. A yojana is 8 miles, so 800 miles. 
to get across. It wasn't easy. You think 800 mile ocean, mm -hmm. that's a long way. <laughs> of course the geography has changed since then and the two islands, in Lanka and now it's called Ceylon, is a lot closer, but because time shifts the planet, the, 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 the territories, continents move by the shifting, mostly by the Arctic melting of the polar caps when they produce more and more water and various types of vegetations, things move, things appear out of the ocean, things disappear. So things change in time. That's why people think, well, this must be fictitious because Ceylon and, and uh, India are not 800 miles apart. I don't know, how, maybe 100 miles. But that's what it was, you know, two million years ago when Lord Ram was here. So now they're deciding. So each of the monkeys are trying to measure in their own capacity whether they can actually jump. And each of the monkeys recites their abilities. Some say, well, I can jump 30 ojanas, I can jump 40 ojanas, I can jump 80 ojanas. One monkey said, I can jump 100 ojanas, but I don't think I can get, get back. Mm -hmm. And Hanuman is there. And finally, Jambavan, he's the oldest of all the living entities over there. He goes way back, he's the oldest, and the most wisest also. He said, Hanuman, you have the power, don't you remember? You were given that blessings by the demigods. The wind god is your father, you can go, you can do it. There's no doubt. Upon hearing the words of Jambavan, Hanuman awakened to his powers, and then he understood, yes, I do have that power. So here's a, here's a point that we sometimes see ourselves as lacking in some area that we need to yeah, develop or to need to achieve. And we may also have to, we feel that we can't do it. Or we don't have, we don't have, we look at ourselves and we see I don't have the ability, capacity or even the, the a level of surrender that I need in order to do it. But that's, the Jambavan represents the spiritual master. <laughs> the spiritual master enlightens the disciples and, and not only enlightens them, but gives them the mercy that they need in order to move forward. But mostly the confidence, that is important. Because when you have confidence, you have faith. And when you have faith, then you're motivated. Then you're motivated to do things. Um... Hanuman, now he's ready to go, but then, then he realizes one thing, and this is the second point, he has to pray. <laughs> he has to pray. Because without the power of prayer, we don't really open up our capacity, nor do we find the assurance that we need to do what we have. By praying, just like tonight, I was thinking, I finished my class, and I was thinking, hmm, I have a few hours left tonight. I'll just, what am I do? I'll chant for a while, then I'll read. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. And, you know, I was just thinking how to fill the time. And as soon as I thought like that, I got an email from, not an email, a message from Ananta. Come and give the class. Okay, my prayers worked. <laughs> As soon as I, I got the prayer, the prayer the, I started to pray. What am I going to do with the rest of the evening? I could read a little bit. I'm tired of the computer. I didn't want to go on that. I was so happy to shut it down when I was... <laughs> and then I thought, I'll read three hours, some japa, some reading. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Looking forward to the hour when I can take rest. But that's no fun either. <laughs> So then, but you know, through the prayer, all of a sudden the inspiration comes and Krishna's in the heart and he said, hey Ananta, write him, write him, write him, write him. <laughs> oh, he's praying, write him, write him, write him. <laughs> so Ananta doesn't know he's getting that message, but he's thinking, he's thinking about it. <laughs> 
So this is how all the things are happening beyond our level of perception. We're, we're, we're desiring, we're praying, but something else is happening all around us to help us fulfill our needs, our desires. So Hanuman knew that, and as soon as he prayed, then he felt, yes, now I have the power to do it. He felt satisfied. And this is where prayer comes in. Prayer gives you that satisfaction. You open yourself to Krishna. What can I do? It's up to you. And then Krishna makes the arrangements or empowers us to do something. He jumps. He's, now he's flying through the air. He comes for a little ways and then all of a sudden out of the ocean comes this gigantic golden mountain, Mount Minda, sent by the god of the ocean to give Hanuman a chance to rest. So here, this is the um, this is the temptation that looks nice. Things sometimes things look very nice, but they're meant for your defeat. <laughs> you might like it; it looks nice, but it could destroy you. <laughs> so Maya comes in that form too, making everything look well. You know. Hey, a golden mountain, so many fruits on the mountain, beautiful sceneries, trees, places to go, celestial environment, everything was nice. The mountain offered Hanuman a chance to relax, take it easy, enjoy, slow down. Don't become a fanatic. <laughs> you know, Krishna consciousness is there tomorrow too, you know. You could take it easy today. But as soon as you slow down, what happens? Maya speeds up. <laughs> this is how Krishna consciousness works. There's no question of slowing down because you, you're either in the spiritual energy or you're in the material energy. There's no in-between. So you either have to be pushing yourself to move forward in Krishna consciousness or you'll be being pushed by Maya to go to, into that direction like that. So a, a serious devotee knows using every minute for the service of the Lord and developing that consciousness. So this golden mountain represents the, an obstacle to somehow divert our attention away from, the, from our practice of devotional service. He to, to slow us down or make us even give up or just take time to enjoy in a material way. But Hanuman, he uses intelligence. No, my mission is more important than my so-called enjoyment. He thanked the mountain, respected the mountain's offer. He didn't, he wasn't like unfriendly or uh, what we say, acting wrongly. He was very happy, but at the same time, he respectfully declined. He went on his way, like that. So then, of course, then he's going on. And then what happens? He meets the <coughs> serpent queen. Well, the, no, she's a member of the serpent race. Her name is Sarasa. She was sent by Lord Brahma and the demigods to test so there, you can see there are tests in devotional service. When you become serious, all of a sudden, you will find yourself being tested. Sometimes devotees say that, you know, when they're engaged in devotional service, all of a sudden, your old girlfriend comes back, have you haven't met for 20 years. <laughs> oh! Oh, Ivan, don't you remember me? Oh. <laughs> remember, we got engaged 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it'll happen. It happens a lot with, especially with devotees who get serious. Their old girlfriend reappears somewhere in their life. <laughs> 
Uh, I remember one, uh, and one sannyasi, he was practicing sannyas for more than 30 years. Very strict. He's in the United States. He's like very strict. And before he joined, he was married for a few years and he had a, a daughter. So he left his wife, he left his daughter when she was four years old, and he joined the Hare Krishna movement, never to look back at his family life. So now he's practicing sannyas for so many years, and guess what? His daughter finds him and comes to meet him. Daddy, he's a sannyasi. <laughs> you remember me? You left me when I was four, but now I'm 35. <laughs> so she came back and she smoked cigarettes and did all kinds of other things that devotees don't do. And now he's face to face with his child. <laughs> I mean, Krishna could have said and could have diverted her attention away. But somehow Krishna allowed that to happen just to, to take care of some business, to strengthen his devotional service or something. Could have been a, it could have been a big chance for a fall down. Somehow he had to deal with it, spend some time with her, tried to make her Krishna conscious, it didn't work. <laughs> she appreciated her father, he appreciated her, but after some time he understood and now I have to go back and become, again, fixed in my... So he did the needful, but at the same time he never lost the, the direction in his Krishna conscious practice. So these things do happen. I remember I was out on Sankirtan one time, and I was in an area where I used to live. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> And all of a sudden, an old girlfriend. <laughs> now, it wasn't a girlfriend. It was a sister of a girl that I knew. And she was reminding me of what it was like when I was there years ago. I said, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, nice meeting you. I'm busy. <laughs> so I didn't waste time. I, didn't, I knew that that wouldn't, wouldn't be too good. So yeah, this is, you'll get obstacles. If you don't get any obstacles in your Krishna consciousness, you're doing something wrong. That means Krishna, Maya doesn't even care about you. You're useless. Don't even give him an obstacle because he's not doing anything anyway. <laughs> it's only when you get serious, these obstacles come. And they'll come. They'll come inside and outside. So Hanuman, he saw this uh, serpent lady, and she said, Oh, monkey, Lord Brahma has given me a benediction. No one passes this way without entering into my mouth. And so there became a competitive mentality. So... Hanuman grew bigger than her mouth, and she grew bigger than his, him, and they each grew bigger than each other, using their powers, both had powers. Hanuman realized this competitiveness is not going to solve the solution. So he decided to become very small. <laughs> and he just became small. He walked around in her mouth and came out and said, I have honored the benediction of Lord Brahma. Thank you very much. Now allow me to go on my ways. And she thanked him. The monkey, you're very intelligent. He used, he used intelligence and humility in that. Not trying to defeat her. He could have defeated her in another way, but he used his intelligence not. Sometimes when you are moving towards your goal in life, people will give you trouble and sometimes you try to overcome them and it becomes argumentative, you become competitive, sometimes you become proud of what you've achieved so far and you're trying to impress that on, upon, upon another person. All these things may arise, when you, but Hanuman, did, he didn't get into that whole thing. He just thanks her, thanked her for her 
a chance for him to honor the, Bra the benediction of Lord Brahma, and he went on. In other words, he avoided the competitive mentality. <laughs> now he goes farther, and then another monster comes out of the ocean, and this is Simica. She was sent by the demons. Hanuman is flying high. She's below him. She's envious of him. When someone is better than us, we're looking at it. You can't be envious of someone in a spiritual sense, but you can be envious of someone in a material sense. Someone is better looking. Someone has more things. Someone is better at doing the things that you like to do. In other words, this enviousness. So she was envious because Hanuman was flying way higher than her and she was thinking. So she was figuring how to pull him down. So when someone, when someone is, when you're envious of someone, you take to criticism of that person or you look for faults. <laughs> Even if there is no fault, you try to find faults. And, and if anybody can find a fault with anybody, you can find fault with Krishna. And people do. You can find fault with the pure devotee spirit. It's not hard to find a fault. It's easy. But then again, that is holding on to the shadow of the person. Because the real person is above their shadow. And the shadow, grabbing the shadow means finding criticism like that. For instance, um, the KGB in Russia, they used to tell, they would say to the authorities, give me a man, I'll give you a crime. <laughs> give me a man, I'll give you a crime. In other words, send anyone to us and I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll show you that he's a criminal in one way or another. So in other words, you can always find fault, you can always do things to make people look bad. If you work hard enough. <laughs> and people do that. Some, there's people who actually make a profession out of that. They're so miserable that all they want to do is bring their misery, misery upon others by tearing other people down. We call them demons. <laughs> or people who are so fraught with demoniac qualities that that's what they live. So this envy... Simica was envious of, of Hanuman because he was flying higher than her. And so she tried to pull him down. So she grabbed his shadow and pulled him down. An envious person wants to pull down the, the object of their envy. And so Hanuman, again, she tried to eat Hanuman. But Hanuman, you know, again, went big, bigger and she went bigger and finally, Again, using his intelligence, he became really small and he went inside of her body and using his mystic power, he came out her stomach and killed her. <laughs> so with, uh, with uh, Sarasa, he was more intelligent and humble, but with, uh, with um, Simica, he was more, uh, what we say, yeah, he was more, he used his intelligence how to destroy her, like that. Uh, Sarasa wasn't a demon. She was a serpent lady, but Simica was a demon, <laughs> demoness. <laughs> she was the mother of Rahu, who was envious of the demigods anyway. So, So some of the things we can learn is to direct our power not towards trying to pull somebody down <laughs> or trying to overcome somebody, but use your power to direct it on how to become Krishna conscious. <laughs> In other words, focus on the essence. Use your power to chant. Use your power to serve. Use your power to understand and you know, the philosophy. Use your power and that way, don't worry about what's happening with other people and what they have or what they don't have. Mm -hmm. Just focus on your you know, direction in life. The ocean represents uh, 
pride in one's greatness. To get across the ocean wasn't difficult, but what did, what did, how did Hanuman get across? As soon as he jumped, he began chanting the names Ram, and he chanted all the way across, never stopping the chanting of the name of Rama. So this ocean of material existence, and this is a nice analogy, because uh, the more you make advancement in devotional service, the more you can see how hard it is to get out of this material energy. It's not easy. <laughs> There are so many difficulties. Where some of the difficulties are due to our attachments from previous lives that we carry into this life. We have our attachments for we don't even have a, we don't even know some of the attachments we have. <laughs> They're so deep. But therefore, the, this, that's why it said this material world is like an ocean. But Hanuman got across the ocean by the power of the holy name of the Lord. Just like when Ram wrote his name on the rocks, they were able to build a bridge across the ocean. So this is where you are successful in getting across the ocean of material existence. Through seriously and regularly chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It's not that, well, I do 16 rounds and... You know, I'm a good boy, I'm a good girl, I did my 16 rounds today. Just see how, how nice I am now. 16 rounds is just to get you started. Because if you don't have a number, you'll never get started. <laughs> 16 rounds is a way to establish regular chanting. But once you start chanting regularly, you want to chant more. And then Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives us, he said, if you chant every day, you will chant always. <laughs> That's how you come to the process of chanting always, the more you chant like that. So this is what brought Hanuman off. You know. He uh, rejected all of the opulences that the mountain gave to him, seeing that these were simply uh, deters, the glitter of material attachments. Uh, another point in pride in doing good to others. There are people who like to do good to others, and they meet other people who la who are doing the same thing, and they they want to ex show that they're actually better than that other person. And so in so many ways they exhibit a sense of pride. Sometimes people will want to do good to others, so much so that they do bad to themselves. <laughs> they harm themselves. And I had personal experience with this, where I met one lady, she was in her late 50s, and she was a mess, <laughs> to use a very simple word. Her health was going to down, and she looked really bad. She was 100% spending her time trying to help other people get over drug addiction, alcohol, so many things. Uh, I told her, you know, when I met her, because I was giving this seminar, Tree of Life, which talks about how to balance your life out, keep a balance in life. And the tree has the roots, the trunk, and the branches. The roots are our sadhana, the trunk is our lifestyle, the branches are our preaching, our outreach, like that. So I was trying to talk about balance, and I was trying to help her understand that she has to balance her life and take care of herself. And you know, she kept what she said to me. She said, you're not the first person who has told me this. <laughs> In fact, many people tell me I have to take care of myself. But you know, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> All I think about is how to help these other people. I says, well, you may not last. <laughs> so her, her motivation to help other people was mixed with her own desire to be known as a person to helping other people. It was a material desire. <laughs> And because of that material desire, she was not 
uh, seeing anything other than to try to fulfill that material desire through the work that she was doing. What was more stronger, her compassion towards other people or her, des her desire for being known within herself and for others as being a good person? It was hard to say, but after speaking to her, I think it was more about her own prestige like that. Like that. So there are people like that who fail to understand how to uh, do good to others in such a way that they don't take themselves down. <laughs> you can only help as m other people as much as you help yourself. <laughs> you have to help yourself first. <laughs> and then you can help others. But as you do that, then it becomes simultaneous. You take care of both and balance it. So pride in doing good to others, or doing great things for others. And Hanuman, he remained detached from everything around him, but he had to use his intelligence in order to do that. His desire was, get, was to find Sita and get across the ocean. He stayed fixed on that, but he detached himself from all the obstacles and all the uh, events that he had to face by using his intelligence. So intelligence is a very important part of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes devotees would say to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I don't have any intelligence. Prabhupada said, get some. <laughs> get some. <laughs> so where do you get it? <clears throat> from the, the spiritual master, from Krishna, from Shastra. <clears throat> Intelligence is the connection to the soul with Krishna. Not through the senses, not through the mind, but through the intelligence. Those who fail to use their intelligence in Krishna consciousness, although they may be nicely motivated, they're sincere, will struggle hard, finding themselves not being able to move forward. It requires to use a clear intelligence because maya is very, very complex and tricky. <laughs> what may look like Krishna may not be Krishna, and what may look, may look like maya may be Krishna. <laughs> Intelligence comes by experience, intelligence comes by hearing, intelligence comes by practicing the process, intelligence comes by accepting the intelligence coming from higher sources. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the little lessons that we can learn from the important lack of confidence overcoming it by prayer, not accepting the, uh, the obstacles in order to enjoy, giving up the competing mentality, avoiding envy, directing one's pr powers in devotional service, not becoming proud about how, how advanced one is, and uh, the pride that can come by doing good works, using intelligence and remaining detached. So these are some of the messages we can learn from this particular pastime of Hanuman jumping across the ocean. Okay, so. Any questions? Comments? <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, I just want to check if I understood it properly when you said that the before we help others, we should help ourselves first. Is that meant that uh, first we go, we must go through some uh, 
experiences and to realizations. No, that means just becoming Krishna conscious. In other words, you, if you have to give something to someone, you have to have it yourself. <laughs> you can't give something that you don't have. So whatever you're trying to give to others, you should also be able to have it yourself. We can talk theoretically, but we have when we talk from experience, that has much more effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the idea is work on your own Krishna consciousness and then you have something to give others. The more you build your own Krishna consciousness, the more people will actually come to you for Krishna consciousness, because they can see, oh, here's a person who, has, who is Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. A question more? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about these uh, tests, and for example, if we fail at some test, I heard the test come again, but in a different, uh, different uh, mode, something like this. It may come again in the same way, it may come again in, in a slightly different way. Just the task is slightly different. So, or... Well, the thing is, in order for you to go to the next stage, you have to pass where you are. So those tests are to get you to the next stage, that's all. It is uh, helpful if we just, uh, when we are faced with the test, that we just write it down so that the next time we can understand Oh, I had this test, and then searching for some uh, uh, options, solutions, strategies, so, how to pass this text. Well, when you know how Maya is attacking you, and you know why Maya is attacking you in the way she is, then you can look at it with more clarity. Oh, this is my attachment, and this is what this is what's happening. So then, yeah. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like that. But that doesn't mean you're going to pass the test. <laughs> it means you can get an understanding of what's happening. Clarity of clarity of the experience helps you to come with up with a understanding of how to deal with it. And then part of that understanding, a big part of it is prayer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all have tests. Mm -hmm. If you're not being tested, you're means you're you're not practicing Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you very much. Really amazing class again. I really love it. Um, my question would be like once I heard from Sutta Prabhu, like he said that. When you stretch out with practical service, that uh, also we need to stretch out uh, with sadhana. So we, we need to straighten the sadhana. So is this more like general principle or more individual, both? Uh, service and sadhana, you talking Like about? if you do, if you stretch more for practical service, like you said that we need to increase, improve. Oh, okay. Like then probably you need to raise sadhana as well. Well, sadhana is the force that propels us in the direction of service. <laughs> but we have to always keep regular sadhana. Yeah. If you have a, a fixed sadhana, work at that. It doesn't mean you don't have to increase the amount, but you should always try to increase the quality of your, service, your sadhana. That's important. The quality of our chanting, the quality of our relationships with devotees, the quality of our uh, understanding of this philosophy. All these things are part of sadhana. So uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj writes in his, his book four things. Keeping your mind on the goal and at the same time developing the determination to reach the goal which requires strong and regular sadhana. If you don't have that, 
even though you're looking towards the goal, you won't be able to stay fixed on the goal. Because that sadhana is what brings you from one stage to another. Mm -hmm. And when sadhana comes to the point of being spontaneous, then you have actually reached the higher stages of bhakti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, you have to keep that, keep that sadhana strong. It's not that we can sacrifice our sadhana for more service. You can't do that because after a while you'll be, then you'll start to lose your enthusiasm for the service also. Sadhana is our strength. Actually, he said more service, more sadhana. Well, I don't know if that's true. I'm not sure that's true, but more continuous sadhana with more service, strengthening your sadhana. It doesn't mean you have to always increase your sadhana in terms of quantity, but quality always is a feature of a devotee's emphasis. How to put quality in whatever I do. Quality in listening to the class, quality in giving the class, quality in chanting the holy names. Quality in sitting down and taking prasadam and not being overwhelmed by the senses and actually understand that this is, I'm honoring prasadam who Krishna has come in the form of. All these are qualitative principles that we can apply in, in all the activities we do. It, it's about Krishna consciousness. It's not about Krishna, it's just about doing things. <laughs> So what did you mean with continuous sadhana? Means uh, regular sadhana every day. You can't minimize your sadhana. You have to keep it. If you want to increase it, that's good. But that's not necessarily. You should increase. You should always think in terms of quality. But if you can do quantity too, that's good. That's nice. But then again, there's people who do only sadhana, and that's another fault. They don't preach. They're called bhajana nandis. They simply do sadhana. They do a lot of kirtan, they do a lot of chanting, they read books, but they don't preach. So they never, they don't grow because they actually lose after everything what they gain. You have to give what you gain. If you don't give it, it, it won't grow either. <laughs> Sadhana is the force that allows us to develop that enthusiasm to give. But if we, if we just do a lot of sadhana, then the tree is getting watered at the root, but not really with the right kind of water. The bark is growing, but the branches, there's no fruit on the tree. <laughs> It's not enough just to do sadhana. You have to do seva. <laughs> and when seva develop, when when seva becomes f forceful, sadhana also becomes seva. It actually becomes seva too. It transforms itself. Then everything becomes everything becomes service. Even our sadhana. <laughs> In what sense? And then we don't see any distinction. I'm serving the Lord by chanting. I'm serving the Lord by doing book distribution. Same. But then it's not a matter of division. It's a matter of just becomes natural. It's all seen as service. <laughs> that help? Uh, amazing, thank you. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Oh yeah, we have 
maybe one or two. Yeah, it's not a very pleasant announcement. But, well, maybe you heard. Uh, Bibi Govinda Maharaj has also come down with COVID-19. So he's under Dr. Karen. I think he's in Vrindavan. So he just wrote something, which I just read, got posted. So uh, you can offer your prayers for Maharaj. He's been here, right, a few times for Kirtan? No. No? Not yet. Mm -hmm. No, he never came here. Oh, okay. He has certain areas. He, he, he usually goes to certain areas, mostly. Yeah, so uh, just offer your prayers. Uh, he's, he said, the only thing that really will help me is the prayers of the devotees. <laughs> he doesn't want anybody writing him. <laughs> he said, because I don't have any energy to respond to your writings. <laughs> so, so anyway, he says he's under doctor's care. I, I don't know how serious it is. It, did, it wasn't any indication, but this is the message we got. Okay, so um, there's been some uh, plans to try to help him in other ways. So let's see what happens. So there's some hope, but about two days ago, or at least even yesterday, it looked pretty bad. So. Mm -hmm. If you want to be free from this disease, do one thing. Keep your immune system strong. If you can do that, if your immune system is not so strong, build it up with proper diet, proper exercise, and uh, advice from people who can help you. That's the best way. Keep your immune system strong. Okay, so Sri Sri Pancha Tattva Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hanuman Jayanti Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Balaram Rasayatra Ki Jai, Shamananda Panda Ki Jai, Bamsi Badananda Ki Jai, First day of the new month Ki Jai. <laughs>